What's up guys, everything Apple Pro here, and iOS 10 Beta 8 was just released today. So Apple is really, really ramping up with these beta releases, and as of late, it's been pretty small stuff. Very, very small updates, you know, refinements before the GM and eventually final release. So currently, Beta 8 of iOS 10 is tied in the position of being the most betas for a new iOS release with iOS 5. So if there is one more iOS 10 Beta 9, it will be the record winner. Right now, it's tied, so I'm kind of looking forward to see what will happen there. But anyways, like usual, let's go ahead and cover what's new. And I missed out on beta 7 and beta 6. I know I was gone. So I'm going to throw some of the features found in those as well into this video. Just roll it all into one. And let's go ahead and take a look at the latest developments in iOS 10. So the update itself is a very, very small one. 27 megabytes. A lot of people were having issues installing it. So if you do, you can come back to it later, but you should be good now. So Beta 8, let's go ahead and check this out. So upon looking through it, you know, obviously I can tell this thing is almost ready for prime time. It's very fast, very speedy. Everything is super responsive, especially on my iPad Pro and on the newer devices. So you guys are gonna love, love this upgrade. And as far as history goes with Beta 7, Beta 8, this is probably the most stable beta release I've ever used. So it's almost ready to even use right now. But now, are there any new features? I've been digging through it. I've been comparing it to beta 7, 6, and 5 as well, and there is like nothing. I haven't found any changes whatsoever in this release, which is kind of sad because I like finding these little changes, but it seems as if this is pretty much the final build already. I mean, not quite. There will be one or two more, hopefully, but this seems almost ready to go. If you guys were questioning whether or not to use this as a daily, it's probably gonna be very, very similar to the final release. And some features I missed in beta seven, beta six, even some older betas. Let's go ahead and jump into those. First off, the zero day vulnerability bug. So the other day, there was a hack that became known to everybody that your iPhone could pretty much become hostage to a hacker, your camera, your microphone, everything. All of your messages, all of your phone calls could be intercepted. So the beta seven of iOS 10 does fix that. This one surfaced in beta seven or beta six. So if you're ever in a call and you 3D touch, there will be a much different vibration. Maybe it's to make it easier to actually feel it when you're talking, there's sound coming from your iPhone, but the vibration is much different if you're within a call. Whenever there's a new software update, you'll not be notified by a little red badge in settings. So previously, it was a different color. Now it's red, both here and here. Siri, what's my battery? Your iPhone is at 100%. In the last few betas, Siri is now able to tell you the battery percentage of your iPhone, your Apple Watch, your Apple Pencil, and even the Apple Smart Battery case. Kind of a neat small feature. Using Hey Siri is now synchronized, so whichever device you are actively using, it will appear on that device. Hey Siri. So in this case, I was using the iPhone, it appeared there. If I turn that off, use my Apple Watch. Hey Siri it will appear on that one, kind of cool, so there's no interference between the devices. This one is actually kind of neat, so depending on what type of message you're about to send the other person, that person will get a different read receipt current status. So in this case, when I'm typing, that's the regular one you'll get. Let's say you're about to select something from the store over here, so if I start looking for pictures, it will go ahead and say over here that I'm doing that with the pictures. If I'm about to use the handwriting feature, Check this out over here. It'll begin to do the little sketch version of that loading indicator. Really, really cool. And if you're gonna do a digital touch message over here, it will go ahead and give you a different readout for that one as well, which is really, really neat. So that's custom read receipt indicators. And while I'm in digital touch over here, you can go ahead and click on the digital touch icons and you'll get a full list telling you what each one is. So kind of cool, missed that before. This one's kind of cool. So iOS 10 actually has a new boot logo animation. So on the left, iOS 10 on the right, iOS 9. Take a look at it, iOS 9 just jumps right into the OS. iOS 10 gradually fades in and it's a much, much smoother transition from boot to actual usage. So if I had a lock passcode, it would pretty much just be the Apple logo to the lock screen like this. Whenever you're typing in a passcode on the system prompt, if you're ever in the caps lock mode, it will show you with this little indicator right there. So it'll give you a little arrow up to let you know not to confuse you when typing in your passcode. Kind of cool. This is a very small attention to detail. Using the new tap back feature with a different system language enabled. So for example, I have Russian set up right now on mine. If you go ahead and use tap back, you will get a different prompt instead of LOL, so it replaces it, if I can get this to work, 
with haha in Russian. If you're in Japanese, it'll do something else in every language. It'll basically replace LOL with the equivalent of it in that language. In the control center, if you have HomeKit devices enabled, there is a new color palette for certain lighting devices. So if you have the Philips Hue and you go ahead and hold on the toggle for it in the control center page for HomeKit, you'll get this little interface right here where you can easily customize the colors and edit them for the presets. Really neat. And this is a special shout out to James VDM for finding it on Reddit. Whenever 3D touching in iOS 10, the latest few betas added the ability to go ahead and get five prompts. Previously, it was four, but five is now the max. If you're ever looking at a file in iCloud Drive, the new iOS 10 update will give you more details on it. Previously, this is all you would see on iOS 9. So guys, that's it. iOS 10 beta 8, no new features in this release. And as far as I can tell, I don't think we'll be seeing any more big ones. I mean, hopefully Apple will sneak in a night mode right there towards the end, but you know, that's not gonna happen. Anyways, I will be keeping you guys updated on any more betas. Will we see any more? There's a good chance next week we could see another one, beta 9. But if I were Apple, I would really just make beta 10, 10 betas for iOS 10. I mean, it just has to happen. So we should be seeing a GM the week after the next one and then final release probably on September 5th or 6th. So that's when the iPhone is gonna get announced and they usually release the new iOS update immediately after. So stay tuned for that. I'll be doing all of the tests to iOS 9, the final build of iOS 10, can't wait. And will you guys be able to update from a beta if you're running one right now to the final release? Yes, you will be able to in the past. That's always how it worked. So shouldn't change this time around. Stay tuned guys, have a great day. Peace.